So we've been talking about the quick um, uh, 10 second fix and things. So if you haven't caught the other film, basically we're playing an action to adjust the levels. Then it's also set in the arrays tool, arrays to history, basically anything that is away from the floor, I can basically paint with a big brush. And then basically with the smaller brush selected, I can go in and actually paint around the flesh element to the hand that is being burnt out and as well as the foot. And then within a, a few short seconds, I've basically fixed what was that grubby little floor and things really. So we've got a quick image. But when we start to look at an image like this, this is going to take a lot more work and there's no way this is really going to have a, if I wanted a perfect high key wall behind, there is no way that this is going to be fixed in that way no matter what, it's going to take some time. So let's look uh, just at a, a way that I would start to tackle this in a, a quick speed way rather than the perfect way. So I might have just one image that the flash hasn't fired on the left hand side or I switched it off by mistake or whatever, whatever it would be but I need to do this. So the first thing is remember we're working in Photoshop but I would actually go back to the RAW first and I would just bring that back into the RAW just double click it to launch it bring it in the raw window and the first thing I want to do is actually just add a little bit more of adjust adjustments to help uh, to help me so basically uh, let's bring the contrast in uh, down a lot more so I bring some more detail in towards the face uh, let's push the highlights up a little bit just to start to light lighten it but um, in the same point to kind of opposite oppose the cod uh, the contrast uh, shadow wise just bring it down just a little bit and then whites we're going to um, push up quite a lot in fact yeah just towards here and then in our blacks we're going to take it right down pretty much to a minus one i'm not interested in this image because i've already got the other image open as well because i've gone back to the raw it's going to open up a new file even though it's got the same file name and that's basically where we're working as so from this type of image we can now actually start to actually have a better selection tool or whatever would be around it so we can kind of start to fiddle around the first things first is decide on what is the hard, hardest point to do is it to erase the background that's really what we've got to do here so Photoshop has some great little tools including the background erase tool uh, and basically what we want to do is make sure that up at the top here the tolerance is not too high we want to click on protect the foreground color so as I start to just keep my cursor outside of the body it starts to actually erase the actual um, point where I've actually selected onto so you can see see this here before I do that though let's um, just duplicate the layer first so control J I'll switch the background layer off okay um, basically let's do the same thing so there's no way as I said this is a 10 second fix but it is a way for us to work quite wise on an image that we've made a mess of um, I've brought the de uh, the detailing back on the face so you might have seen there already we've just lost a little bit of an edge of the face there we'll bring that back in a second and just kind of pushing around we've lost this little edge on the highlight of the hand as well but pretty much everything else is doing its job because we brought the cod at uh, the contrast up higher and you might end up with just a little bit of fringing around the edge but we can kind of blur all that and things really so it depends how far we want to be going down to I'm looking to actually keep the mucky floor in fact I'm just looking to actually remove the the kind of the background wall so now I've done uh, around the body I can go with a much bigger brush but Photoshop's working quite hard here because it's making a selection and so on with it where you've got to ask yourself at this point do I really need the background erase tool or do I just need the eraser so once I'm away from the bod body I can let Photoshop relax a little bit and just go ahead and click on the erase tool making sure I click off this erase to history option at the top here go and get myself a nice big brush and then basically start to paint away the rest of the background. Now I know we haven't popped her onto the white yet. We'll go do that now in a second. Um, but we definitely start to have an image now compared to where we were. We've started to remove that background. Let's um, select the background layer, click on new layer. We'll just go and uh, fill that with uh, 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 white. 
Okay, so there's a pure white within here, and we start to see the kind of the muckiness. Now, we've seen this before, haven't we? We've seen that with the last image, and we know that we can go in and fix these little parts and how we kind of get rid of them. So if we go back to the top again, if we go to Control L, we know if we pick the white picker, choose things that were in the photograph that are that color, and they're going to be getting rid of, so we can get rid of those straight away. But what we haven't got here is the de uh, the detailing on the face, and that's the one thing that we just lost by doing that. So by clicking onto that race to history straight away, we got rid of the white. We got a problem. But let's go Control J. We'll duplicate that layer once more. You can see how dark and, and kind of uh, ugly the background erase tool really is now. Remember, at any stage, we can go back in, pick up the background erase, and start to erase it on that layer. But really, what we want is the de uh, the detail of the the face that we're going to lose. So remember here, Control L. Just going to pick up. We're going to hit the black point pick around the image to actually remove as much as we can and you can see what we're losing is all the face and so on with it um, but then if we bring up the mask and we basically go BDX and we start to actually paint some of this back in again we start to actually bring in the, de uh, the detail in the face and on the skin and we can start to actually bring it back through to where it is now in the perfect world we take our time trying to kind of um, bring everything back together as far as uh, lose as much as we can but what we've got to do is start from somewhere decent so at least if we're bringing a little bit of information back in here contrast is much higher now actually onto the arms and the hands we've brought the, de the detail back down on the skin so once that's back below, whether it's a race to history or race to below or masking as we do here, we have um, images that basically are doing different things. So there's the mask to bring the tonality of the skin back. If we just switch that one off a minute, we can see what it was uh, masking to below. So if I switch that on and off again, we might go, OK, well, I want some more there. Let's come back into the feet and just bring a little bit. We already know, in fact, that I want a, uh, a kind of the bottom of the image here to give me the floor. I went a bit too high on that mark. OK, so there's there's the floor. So what am I trying to actually um, bring uh, bring back? It could be this part of the image. So in other words, we're going to add a mask in. And if we just hold that Alt key as I do that, it instantly puts a black mask in. And you can see we've brought the original floor, uh, floor in back in towards the image. I can just Alt click to drag that up, and that's going to put it in as well. And basically, we can add it in as we go. So if I click, uh, Control click onto that, it makes the selection. And then basically, we have an option to actually decide on if we want to actually even bring it up onto the top. So from here, we're, we're kind of beginning to work all almost there, but we've lost some valuable I information. So all I've got to really do is at this point, let's flatten the image. Let's move it back now. So we're going to copy it or move, move it on top of the original layer, pressing the Shift command as we do it. It lays it over on the top. We've still got all this muckiness that is here behind, but we've got the valuable detail that we might have lost if we hadn't gone back to correct it. So we've dragged the layer on. Next stage for us is to duplicate it, Control J. And this time we're going to just blur out this white a little bit more. Before we do that though, let's just do Control J to duplicate once more, Control L. Let's see what the white pick is going to be doing for us. That's blur, uh, blurring that out. Remember, we've got all our floor, uh, flooring in here. So can I now get away with it? That's really what we're trying to achieve, is actually getting away from a problem. We might even create a little bit more drama of the image. So the, fir uh, the first thing would be, let's switch off the other images below. They're really not doing anything. Let's go back up and uh, select our kind of uh, line, so along here, giving us a nice sharp floor. Perhaps we're going to go in and basically with the brush tool now, so BDX, bring our, our black on top. We're going to hide what is on the top here and start to actually revealing the floor. And then, of course, if I want to just add in a little bit of a blurred edge to this top, we can go uh, select, f modify, and feather. Let's give it like, I don't know, 25 feather on the here, and we'll start to eat into the actual floor, so it'll just soften that a little bit. Control, uh, control D. So we're pretty much 
close to a correct photograph but we still need to actually bring a little bit of that valuable information and that valuable information is in the image below if we take our time including the outfit of the girl and so on but we've got pretty much a good kind of taste remember we're in recovery rather than going through a cutout and everything else we want to kind of keep some of the shape and the tech and the textures and so on so in this case with our mask i'm going to once more just now make a small little brush and start to actually paint in on the face nice and close bring in the information that we want I'll just make it a little bit quicker for us and bring in the detail back just using the left bracket to shrink down all the time Let's go now and bring in some of the body texture back in again. So actually into the suit, we'll raise that opacity up a little bit more. Brush is still within the body size. Just pay a painting some in here, just along the body. Shrink it down now, coming down the leg. Shrink it down even more for the foot. Take it up the arm, same shape. Remember, we're coming up into the arm again. We've kept that texture in there. We haven't lost it. And pretty much we've got a, a, a not a bad fix for a quite a difficult image in a couple of steps. So it's never going to be a 10 sec second fix. So if we want to add a little bit more drama into here and things really, let's just go in and basically add in a solid color. Go and choose something from the color palette. Lights and brights. Press an OK. Basically then choose a bled mode to actually start to bring it in perhaps change the opacity down just a little bit more to actually give a bit of a tone if we don't like that tone let's go in and actually change anything that we want to it gives that little bit more of a kind of a blend together and it starts to actually hide all of your mistakes that you made obviously changing the opacity down and in the way that it was going to actually work within the image whether it's dark and light and normal it's really down to you but what we have done is we've moved ourselves from a problem into a little bit more of a fixed image keeping ourselves a white background.